How about quality control? You got an issue there? Show of hands. I know there's always a, always a lot of talk about it. Um, there's, a, there's a natural kind of Gaussian distribution, bell-shaped curve to quality of affiliates, to trainers. And uh, you know, so you got, you got a, 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 a few really, really bad ones and a few really, really good ones. And then kind of some average that sits at the top of the curve. Here's the deal. The, the, uh, uh, from that axis, and you, you picturing this as bell curve? So I got the poor ones in the skinny end. I, you probably can't see this, but I'll draw it anyways, because it's what I do. So I got a certain number of, limited number of bad ones here. It's the F students and the A students, the good ones. And then we got your run of the mill good guy, right? Just average affiliate. Um, from left to right on this x-axis, uh, this, this is the mapping of their influence. And so you got a guy who sucks, or she sucks, they're generally standing there in the gym all by themselves. And they got a story to tell. And I'll tell you what it is. It's that this guy, with all the clients, who's good, is his problem. And the song he sings, and sings loud and clear, is one of quality control. It's kind of a weird thing. And so I've got, I've got these people screaming about the, the you know, it's a, it's, a very, it's a very small number, screaming about the quality of affiliates. And the closer we look and the deeper we dig, we find out that, yeah, we have a quality control problem, and they are it. <laughs> and when they fail, we kind of like, bye-bye, you know? Good luck at your next venture. I don't know of a very busy trainer where it's not obvious why they're very busy. I hang out in their box and I like these people I would train here. One of the things that I wanted to get across this weekend, and I, and it, it, I didn't want it to, I don't want to lecture you, I like talking to you and talking with you, but one of the things I wanted to talk to you about um, was that uh, uh, we, we give a lot of attention and a lot of discussion about the quality of movement. And I'm here to tell you that that's not what makes or breaks a trainer, and it's not what determines a good one or a bad one, necessarily. It's, it's, it, it's, it's not one of the major factors. It really isn't. I'll tell you just to, to name one, for instance, I'll tell you something way more important than the quality of your training in terms of whether your deadlift technique is exquisite or not, okay? Whether you're up to level two snuff or not. And that is simply how clean your bathroom is. Does that come as a surprise to you? If, if, if in your demoing a clean, you pull a little bit with your arms, and maybe your grip's not quite right, and uh, suppose you, you catch a, a, it not at full hip extension, and then kind of fake it and drop back down and pop back up, and it, it's like just not level two training quite, what that suggests to me is that it's a work in progress, that you've got more learning to do, that, you, that there's some development that awaits you that's gonna be, that's gonna be transformative of your understanding and, and your ability to perform and teach. When I go into the gym and see a dirty bathroom, what I see is that you don't give a fuck, and that's fatal. There's, there's no amount of there's no there no, no amount of poverty or lack of clients that excuses a dirty bathroom, and it's and you know, dirty bathrooms aren't my thing. Yeah, I, you know, kind of. But but I want you to understand that it's it's a symbol for something more important than the bathroom, and that is for how much you care. For how much you care, and I can fix. I can fix bad training, I can't fix you don't care. I can't give you pride where you don't have it. That I, that I don't know how to do. But I can straighten out that pull in with the fucking arms, and pretty quick. And so really all you need to bring to the game is a love of the client, a lot of pride, a profound commitment, and that manifests in a clean floor, a clean bathroom, being there on time, Loving your clients, getting to know them, getting, getting into their hearts and souls, 
becoming, becoming friends with them. And I, and I can see it right when I walk through the door, I know. Cool thing, that it, what I'm telling you is it's really easy. Once you care, once you're fully committed, the rest will fall into place, and it's just a matter of time. And every time I come visit you, your movement patterns and, your, and the movement patterns of your, of your chargers will look better and better and better. Let me tell you something else a dirty bathroom will do. It will scare off the most important clients to your business. Now, can you run a thriving gym with a dirty bathroom? Oh, hell yeah. I tell people, you could shave your head bald and tattoo a swastika on your forehead and get clients. I also know what your clients will look like. <laughs> Not my cup of tea, but I'm, I'm sure it could be done. But here's what a dirty bathroom will do for you. All those people in your community that are hugely influential and have the means to support you and your efforts will not want to come around. I got a shocker for you. You should strive, you should hope, you should watch and look for an ever-increasing average annual income of your client base. Now, let me give you one good reason why you want to do that. So you can help poor people. Do you understand that? Lorne and I ended up with a couple of billionaire clients. And what they allowed us to do was extend generosity to people that didn't have the means to work with us. And as a result of that, we were able, I mean, look, we all know Steve Liberati, right? He's a, he's a friend, he's doing, he's doing blessed, wonderful, I'm not, a, I'm not a religious man, he's doing God's work. It's amazing what he's doing. But he hasn't been able to help a fraction of the people that Lauren and I have been able to help. Why? He doesn't have the backing. When we give scholarships, we call them, for training, for, for seminars, for the journal, that's coming, on, that's coming because of the generosity of the people that have means that have come into our lives. I had a client that paid me twice my going rate to travel to her house and work with her and her husband. And he would typically come downstairs three, four, or five hours late and the clock was running. And I sat there in the garage and I wrote the first two years of the journal. How's that for a deal? And when it came time to expand the gym, there they were, checkbook in hand. We want to help, we want to contribute, we want to give. We went to pay back the money and they said, no, we're not gonna take it. It's, if you ever become wealthy, I'll take it then. I keep asking her, am I wealthy yet? She's, no, not yet, you're not. <laughs> you understand you want those people? They're in your community. Every one of you, every community. I haven't been to a community where there aren't people with, with means. And they're going to they're gonna insist on a clean bathroom. And they're disproportionately influential in your community. They can help facilitate anything that you want to do. Especially help disadvantaged people. Do you understand? What else?